modern world has become extremely dependent on various technological developments and innovations and to the extent that it's practically impossible to survive in the world without engaging in these, uh, at least to, uh, to a certain extent. And so the question becomes, uh, how do we as Orthodox Christians, uh, to what extent can we as Orthodox Christians uh, be involved in these things? And how do we uh, approach our involvement to these things uh, in such a way that won't cause us spiritual harm? Um, as some 20th century thinkers have pointed out very uh, insightfully, these things aren't neutral. You know, we have this idea that, uh, that they're just tools and you can use them for good or you can use them for bad, but basically they have no uh, intrinsic moral worth. Uh, and that's, I think, uh, something that we can clearly see is not true. One of the most obvious results of these technological innovations uh, has been the extreme increase in distraction that all of us have to deal with. And for the Orthodox Christian, uh, one of the main results of distraction is the inability to pray. Uh, when we spend our days uh, immersed in a digital world that constantly leaps from one subject to another, it trains our minds to likewise be constantly leaping from one thing to another. Uh, and this is, uh, of course, uh, this is something that's true regardless of whether the particular content uh, is uh, positive or negative. And of course, we shouldn't pretend that uh, that technological developments have have been only a negative force. Uh, I found out about both orthodoxy and the monastery uh, in which I reside uh, through the internet. So. Uh, we can clearly see that there is a use to be made of them. And I often think of a, a story from St. Porphyrios of Capsucalivia, who uh, used to keep a telephone by his bed, and his disciples would say, Yerinda, what are you doing with this demonic device next to your bed? And of course he was you know, calling people halfway around the world in the middle of the night to answer the questions that they hadn't even asked him yet. Uh, and while we may not be doing that, uh, we can still take to heart his answer uh, to his disciples, which was, are you going to see God give man this incredible intelligence and this ability to create these marvelous things and then only let the devil use them? Uh, so we have to, we have to uh, exist. And this is something that, uh, that Patriarch Kirill uh, said uh, several years ago uh, to, the, to the bishops and priests of the Russian church. He said, you have to be where the faithful are. Uh, and uh, for better or for worse, uh, we are very much uh, immersed in this technology. And so if we simply withdraw uh, from these mediums, these media, uh, then we're going to leave people uh, to essentially perish without any knowledge of the truth. So we have to make use of them, but we can't uh, allow ourselves to make use of it indiscriminate, indiscriminately, and especially not without moderation. Uh, it's incredibly easy to uh, to let hours and hours go by uh, without being aware of what we even did, uh, jumping from you know one one website or YouTube video or or what have you to another, uh, and so we need to be on our guard against this, and we need to make sure that, uh, that our uh, our life is oriented first of all towards Christ and His kingdom, uh, and oriented first of all inwardly. It seems that one of the results of the modern world has been uh, people who are more connected to each other in an external sense than ever, and yet who are more deeply lonely than probably any generation that's ever lived. Uh, and so while we shouldn't deny the utility uh, of s certain of these things, uh, we also can't blind ourselves to uh, the results that they really do produce in our lives. Uh, and so that, that certainly involves uh, mindfulness and awareness, uh, being uh, attentive to ourselves, to our thoughts. Uh, and if we see uh, the harm that these things uh, can do, if we see these things, if we see the harm that these things can do manifested in our own lives, we need to take a step back uh, and reevaluate things. 
uh, if we see that we're no longer able to be attentive in prayer, uh, if we see that, uh, that we've withdrawn from the people who physically present around us, uh, if we see uh, this increased uh, loneliness or free-floating anxiety, uh, then we need to, to be willing to do something about it and to cut off uh, ascetically uh, the parts of our lives that, uh, that are, are causing this harm. And that's all that CSIS is, is the process of cutting off things that are hurting you. Uh, it's not that any of these things are, are just evil, you know, that food's evil or sleep is evil or the internet is evil. Uh, it's that when we misuse these things, it causes a spiritual harm. Uh, I think it's uh, actually in many ways quite similar to how we ought to approach uh, food as Orthodox Christians, uh, something that uh, is in many ways necessary for us uh, to go about our life in this world, uh, but at the same time, which can very easily uh, become uh, a force in our lives that we are unable to control. And so if we even do something as simple as incorporating uh, a digital fast into the fasting calendar of the year, uh, I think this could be immensely helpful for us uh, on Wednesdays and Fridays and during the fast seasons, cutting ourselves off from unnecessary things like social media. You know, uh, with these fasting seasons, we don't cut ourselves off from all food, but rather the food that is more easily able to uh, to distract us or to uh, become an end in itself uh, and to restrict ourselves to what's really necessary. Uh, so if we make that a habit, uh, I think that will protect us uh, in many ways. Uh, and, you know, let's face it, I don't know of too many people whose souls were saved on social media, you know, so I don't think it's going to be a, a great loss uh, to the people uh, around us if we spend a little bit less time on Facebook, for example, or whatever the the, the networks are that people use now. I can't keep track of all of them, but uh, we don't need to take uh, an overly extreme view in either direction, that either these things are just wonderful tools that have uh, enriched life for everybody, or that they're just uh, demonic uh, instruments that we need to, to cut off entirely from our lives. And we, we can take a, a sensible, uh, measured position as Orthodox Christians towards these things. But with that said, I think especially with the young, we need to be very careful uh, with our children uh, and our youth. Uh, even from a, a purely scientific perspective, uh, there's a lot of data that's, uh, that's been unearthed in recent years uh, of the tremendous harm that can be caused to children who are uh, inundated uh, with screens and, uh, and digital worlds uh, from a young age. Uh, that it, it causes all sorts of mental illness and loneliness and uh, inability to uh, to really connect to people in a, a real substantial way. Uh, so, so we need to be careful. Uh, and as is true regarding any of our passions, we need to make sure that we're the ones making the decisions, that we're the ones in control. Another aspect of all of this is the increasing role that uh, that Silicon Valley companies are having over the way in which our culture uh, is uh, is proceeding, uh, and many of those things are, are not exactly very compatible with Orthodox Christianity. But if you take a step back and think, well, how did they get all this power? Uh, how is it that? We've allowed them to be the ones who decide uh, what is acceptable speech and what isn't acceptable speech, or who should have a voice and who shouldn't have a voice. Uh, how have we let them begin to make those decisions? And uh, clearly, we've given them that power. And we're never going to be able to be free of that power unless we decide that, uh, that the things that they've offered us in exchange are not uh, necessities uh, to be willing to give them up. Um, it's not uh, probably an easy thing, but. The only way to get out of a Faustian bargain is to let go of what was given to you in the first place. Um, and we should think seriously, too, uh, if there's something in our lives that we're not willing to give up, uh, that's already a pretty serious indication that we've gone wrong somewhere. Uh, we should uh, be, like Christ says, as the, the birds of the field you know, who have no care for where their food will come from or where they will lay their head. And so if, if we 
allow ourselves to be inundated by cares of really any any number of things but but if there are things in this life that have become indispensable to us, we probably should take a step back and uh, and think about whether they're really that important and really that necessary to us.